Without a family, man, alone in the world, trembles with the cold. Hey folks, welcome back to After Work Gaming. Tonight we're back in stasis, and we're back here in this like visitor's center along uh, aboard the Groom Lake, where I guess we're going to learn more about Kane. Uh, right off the bat, I want to apologize. There was a bit of a break in the videos, uh, work, and then uh, apparently a fire in my apartment building interfered. Uh, but we're back, so let's go. Let's go check out the room first. This is like the visitor's center. Uh, destroyed loader. The loader has no more power after unleashing its kinetic energy on the wall. Right, because we came in through here last time uh, when we powered up the loader. We have here Groom Lake model. Exposed plastic protrudes from the partially destroyed scale model of the Groom Lake. Another Groom Lake model. The aft section of the model has suffered less damage but still reveals hairline cracks throughout. And like the real Groom Lake, it will soon collapse under its own weight. That is a huge ship. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? That's John right there. Um, information kiosk. Information kiosk kiosk. Okay, let's go. Let's go like this. Here, then we'll check out. We'll basically bounce between the, the kiosks and the um, the groom like. John, where are you going? Oh, really? Is a huge ship, and I think we started off back here, and I guess we're like here now. Crazy. Henry Kane was born to an impoverished family in January the 26th, 2000. His mother Clara was a store clerk, and his father Edwin was a veterinarian. Interesting. Um, is there more to it? Henry Kane was nope. born to an Sorry impoverished about that. family um, in January let's go the back 26th, here. 2000. His mother Clara was a store clerk, and his father Edwin was a veterinarian. Okay, and then he found the little company, and that company grew into this disaster that you see as Kane Corp. Okay, information kiosk. Kane Mining Limited was founded in 2050. Henry Kane was appointed to exercise control over East Asian Pacific debt repayment through mining asset acquisition. Okay, I do like that it's a little gramophone icon. I don't know. Okay, groom like. Launched in 2100, the tower was 6,106 feet long. This massive nuclear fusion powered ship was used extensively as a planetary mining platform. Fifteen years of atmospheric exposure resulted in a weak and carbon emission. Hey, can we keep the screams down while I, you know, learn about the ship? We saw something about the tower. Wasn't there like, um, one of the other sections we were in had like a plaque about the tower? So I guess this used to be the tower? The name, the Groove Lake used to be the tower? John. John, please don't tell me you're going to run... Oh, my God, John. In 2116, K Corporation recruited a vessel from its mining fleet to be repurposed as a laboratory. That's it? Okay, fine. Um, so what, this... this, dying, this, this uh, 16 years after this it launched? This poster depicts a 95-year-old Henry King in the prime of his life. The prime of his life at 95? What is going on here with human lifespans? Okay. Did you know? Kane Mining Limited was rebranded as Kane Corporation in June 2019. I did not know, thank you. Look at this, John. We're learning all sorts of stuff. The tower has rechristened the Groom Lake in 2120 when she left Dry Dock and began her journey towards the outer planet. Okay, so there's a statue here and a bunch of information kiosks. Okay, so let's just... Okay, let's just go through here. Charles Clark Kane has proudly taken over the reins from his father and continues his family's legacy. Okay, what about this? Tell me about the statue. A replica of a statue of remembrance that stands in Washington, D.C. I'm sorry? <laughs> Was one of these kiosks going to explain to us why there's a statue for Kane? In 2077, a mile below the surface, Camp 571 in Japan produced a treasure trove of medical research documentation. Really? Do tell. Did you know? Henry Kane served in the military and was a decorated naval aviator. Huh. Okay. 
Um, that thing about being a mile down and finding a bunch of medical documents and whatnot, or, or research, I'm assuming it was kind of like this, right? Where the they were conducting some sort of crazy experiments and then that just resulted in, like, medical advances, because... The rapid advancement of medical research and its auxiliary studies culminated in the perfection of genetic manipulation. Popularized by the media as a medical cold war, the eugenics age far exceeded selective breeding. In 2049, a worldwide ban was placed on unapproved genetic modification. Okay, so that's, and that probably led to the eugenics war, which maybe this is why the statue? Man, I kind of wish there were more kiosks. To be fair, I kind of wish there was more stuff to read, but, you know, okay, fine. Um... The hell? By the way, what is up with the architecture in this ship? This is like... old gothic architecture, you know, like the cathedral-esque architecture here. Alright, what do we have? Destroyed lifeboat. The partially destroyed craft is now useless. Destroyed lifeboat. Large gashes from fallen debris have made this lifeboat inoperable. Destroyed lifeboat. The death trap lies silently in its bay. Anything else? Crane. Flaking yellow chevrons once offered a careful warning. A disused crane suspends its heavy hook, which now serves no function. The hanging metal chains sway silently and teasingly in the breeze. And that one has no description. Lifeboat tube. The launch tube for the lifeboat is currently empty. Really? So I guess this actually launched. Maybe? Maybe? Because, um, didn't we find, like, a, an entry in one of the PDAs that said he, that someone was going to leave one of these lifeboats intact, right? There should be one. Here we go. Crane. Uh, the David sits patiently. The lowering mechanism appears to be damaged or dysfunctional. Lifeboat, the shattered safety glass won't hold up to the rigors of space. Ruptured fuel pipes dribble flammable and toxic fluids, rendering this lifeboat unsafe and definitely unusable. This lifeboat has, unfortunately, been trashed. Anything? 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 No, just an exit. This doorway to the airlock. Okay. Well, let's go. Again. Look at all this, like, really specific-looking architecture. Uh... Uh, yeah. Okay, let's just look around here, huh? Structural beams, the bowed metal buttress, uh, the bowed metal buttress supports the weighted ceiling. Structural beams, yeah, yeah, more structural beams. Windows, the shiny enamel paint glints off the glazed surface to form the portrait of Henry Kane. Interesting. Pipes! The large, hollow pipes bend and turn, snaking towards their destinations. Okay. Is there any explanation for what the, you know, the giant, like, seal in the middle is? No? Without a family, man, alone in the world, trembles with the cold. And of course, that is the, uh, that's the quotation that opens the game, right? And I can't remember what the source of it is. Okay, is this? That's the airlock. The gilded airlock forms an airtight oxygen barrier. Gilded? What is this room? It's like a shrine. Damn. All right, let's go. Oh, hey, Malin. And Blood. Murderer! You really are a roach, Mr. Maratic. John, shoot him! Kill him now! <gasps> I may have pulled the trigger, so to speak, but you and Miss Hensley loaded the gun! Don't try to worm your way out of this, you goddamn monster. Monster? By whose standards do you call me a monster? The morals of men don't apply to gods! Okay, um, what do I have? Ooh, I have a cutter. Can I? Yeah, I can. 
Oh, I'm not gonna shoot you, Malin. I have some fun involved, and that's my wife. Okay. Cut it. Quantum storage device damaged and door missing. Fractural femur detected. Scapula damaged. Seek immediate medical attention. <laughs> Did you... Have we got her? I do. She's here. <laughs> it's over. 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 I'm sorry, it wasn't supposed to end like this. Waking you was a mistake, John. But I'm happy to have met you. I don't understand. Tia, what do you mean? <coughs> you woke me. Answer me! We needed a way to transport the research off the Groom Lake. And your wife's bone marrow was a perfect storage device. Research? This is about fucking research? Yes! It's about research. Worth billions, John. Billions. <laughs> so you cost all of this. You let those things loose. <laughs> no, I'm not that sloppy. The idiots we sent to get your wife's body turned off all the containment protocols. We lost Ellen in all the chaos. That pussy Yuri was on his way to you when Milan got involved. Oh, on his way to get my DNA. It was the only way to locate the data carrier in the ship vest. Old man Kane will be rolling in his grave when I sell his secrets. You're just like Milan. Is that what you think? John, do you love your wife? Well, I loved my husband, and Kane's security forces murdered him during a protest. Kane Corporation took everything from me, and now I will burn them to the ground. You don't have to do this. You don't. To stasis pods, hon. It was never gonna happen. Selenographic coordinates confirmed. Autopilot has been engaged. Time to departure. Fifteen minutes. Amatea, <laughs> I knew you were taking all this a little too flippantly. All right, uh, look around the room later. What do we have? Do we have anything? We don't have anything. What's this, though? What the sort of sharp edge metal ramp disappears in Taya's craft. Yep. You never had any intention of helping me. You used me. You used my family. It's not personal. <laughs> not personal. You bitch. Guilty. Yeah, that's the thing here. It's all about like she's justifying it because something went bad with her family, but are these guns still programmed to shoot anything with a PDT? Oh yeah. Oh Taya. <laughs> Taya. Here, enjoy that. Fuck. Second stasis pod, right? This vessel has been clear for departure. Okay, now we can look around the room real quick. Um, let's just start over here and just work our way in, yeah? Uh, nothing, nothing, nothing. The guns are no longer flavor text full. Fine. Ellen Marachek. Ellen lies motionless. 
Taya's ship, the ultra-luxury space vehicle, sits perched in the hangar. A low hum of the engine indicates that the vessel is powered up and ready to flee from this prison. Taya, the bullet-riddled corpse, lies still in a pool of fresh blood. Yeah, Taya, there was something off about you, I'm not gonna lie, from the beginning. Destroyed stasis pod. Yeah, fluid leaks from the stasis pod's cylindrical perforations. It's damaged beyond repair. Okay, well, let's check out Taya first. Tell me she's got a PDA or something. No, is there nothing? John. Come on. Okay, fine. Can we look at this at least? No? No. Seriously? Okay, fine. Look at let's look at Ellen's pod then. Destination changed. I love you, Ellen. Dang. This is a bit of a dark ending. Hey, what? <laughs> oh man. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, that was Stasis by the Brotherhood. Amazing. Okay, huge, huge congratulations to the guys at the Brotherhood. I thought, you know, for a game that throws it back to isometric sort of point and click adventures and mixes it up with all of the 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 horror and great sound design and visuals and like flavor text and story fantastic job okay and i mean i think that was all the credits by the way so i'm going to talk about the game a little bit more but I mean, check out how small the outfit is and this game was awesome okay i like i i, I said it in the beginning i think i love the game sanitarium and this definitely evokes that but you know, I also, uh, if you guys have never seen it, there's a movie called Pandorium, I think, which is kind of deals with some of these same themes. Um, I want to say there's a book called Hull Zero Three, which I haven't read, but it's been recommended to me, which again also deals with this, like, somebody wakes up on a ship from stasis and everything's gone wrong and they have to figure out what's on the ship, right? Um, and they look for the family or something like that. But... The game, this game, right? So I thought, what I'd heard was that the puzzles were somewhat intuitive in the sense of like, there wasn't anything weird in there. It was very much like, hey, I have this drill. Clearly I can drill through this thing. If I were in this situation, I would try and drill through this thing. Yeah, I can drill through this thing, right? That's the way that the, the game puzzle mechanic worked in the sense of it was, it was a somewhat common sense process. Uh, so I think in terms of mechanics and design, fantastic, right? In the sense of the, there was nothing there's no hiding the ball here. It's very much like you have the thing, or as long as you can find it, you'll have the thing. Um, in terms of uh, visual design, sound, atmosphere, I think everything is spot on exactly what you want. It, it goes from strange and somewhat dis, you know disconcerting that everything's sort of in disrepair and there are some weird noises and screams. And then I think right around when we took out the PDT, I think that sort of kickstarts this weird careening towards the end. Because if you if you think about it, once you take the PDT out, once you do the spinal surgery piece, 
then you get the hydroponics where you have the giant insect then you go to the hybrid labs and then finally you go to the end right and each one of those is just ratcheting it up um, with one thing and I'll, I'll get to that at the end uh, in terms of story John wakes up on a ship doesn't know where his family is and then it's a sort of I need to find my family which is which is the the motivating factor but it's the motivating factor for the journey through this horrifying environment which I think is the real story for for the game right John's quest while important is almost secondary right I mean there there are pieces here where they where they pay off the fact that he's looking for his family like the the, the scene where uh, Milan kills kills John's daughter but it's very much just the the motivation behind taking the player us as John deck by deck through the ship and showing you what Kane was up to on the Groom Lake right which is fine because I am fa I, I am fascinated by what was happening on the Groom Lake I'm fascinated by what Kane was up to and incidentally there's a you know sort of a side piece sequel coming up called Kane a stasis story it was gonna be, it's gonna be it's coming out at the end of January it's gonna be free we're definitely gonna play it on this channel and I'm super excited because I want to know more about this world I don't want to know more about the weird horrifying science experiments that was go that were going on at Kane uh, I think I mentioned in an earlier video the fact that this is divided by decks allows the game to give you different pieces and different types of horror. In the first one, it's pure isolationist psychological horror where there's just weird sounds and maybe some weird sights. And there's not anything particularly dangerous except the environment itself. And it's just very, very unnerving atmosphere. And then you get to the PDT section and then it's just body horror where you have to slice open your, your the spine. And then you get to the hydroponics where it's you know, giant insects and that kind of horror. And then you get to the hybrids and all hell breaks loose, right? And so each step either ratchets it up or is just a different type. Uh, that said, just so I can point out, kudos to the Brotherhood on making what I think is a true horror game. Uh, now there are scary games and horror games in my opinion. There are scary games are games that can have jump scares, but they don't have to be horror. Horror is, is in my mind, something that you can read and be terrified by. And reading doesn't give you jump scares. Horror is something that fills you with a sense of dread and a sense of loathing at the fact that I really don't want to keep going, but I kind of do because I need to see what the next piece is because that feeling you get that like I really, really don't want to keep doing this. Despite the fact that you, you clearly do because you enjoy it, right? So kudos to the Brotherhood on making what I think is a true horror game and not just a scary game, right? There are some jump scares here, but it, it, I think in terms of atmospherics and, and, and horror, this, this game hits every one of the keys for me. Um, the one thing, if I had to say the one thing, uh, I sort of alluded to this before, you know, there is a very serious progression and a very serious escalation that starts with the PDT scene, and what I, I honestly think culminates in Milan killing the daughter. And if I had just one, one bit of criticism, and it's not huge, but after the scene with the daughter, after the scene where you where you see the hybrid in the room with her and, you know, she dies and there's this very uncomfortable downbeat, right, while, while John has to process that in his mind, it's very hard to go up from there. It's very hard to keep ratcheting up from there because I thought that was the highest level of just John, John's despair, right? Now, he gains a purpose after that and to some extent it might be the game might let off a little bit in the sense of John is now over it, right? Like, you've done a terrible thing to him, and he is a man on a mission to find Milan. But at the same time, I kind of... This is going to be a weird thing to say, but I was curious to see if the game was going to try and go another step further. I don't know what that step is. I actually can't conceive of what a step like that would be. But, you know, you've done... The game does something horrible to John, which is... Forces him to see his daughter get eaten alive. If you can conceive of the next thing, the, wor the, the one thing that, that, that is even worse, right, to really ratchet it up, which again, I can't. If you can conceive of a way to ratchet it up from there, I was almost curious to see if there was a way. Uh, because otherwise, you know, the game after that is, okay, now proceed to the end and now you will have your revenge. Now it still ends on a downbeat, and I love the fact that the game ends on a downbeat because, you know, Taya ends up betraying you, you end up sending off your wife, maybe? That last little piece where you see like a desiccated corpse is a thing, okay? But you send off your wife in alone in the ship and John is stuck on the Groom Lake and he will die. Either because he's going to be caught by one of these things, he's going to succumb to the fungus, or because the ship is going to drop into 
the planet's uh, you know the planet's outer atmosphere. So I love the out the ending. I love a, a good like downbeat sort of gloom ending. But like I said, if it was the the smallest of 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 constructive criticisms, it's that I was curious to see the game, which has been imagine very imaginative, to go that one step further after the daughter. But that's just me. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I sure as heck did. Uh, I thank you guys for taking the journey with me. I thank the, the Brotherhood for making the game. And like I said, I am super looking forward to Kane at the end of this month. If you guys did enjoy this, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, tell a friend. Let me know that I'm doing something right. Let me know you guys want to see more games like this. If you have thoughts, if you have ideas, if you have a reaction to how the game ended, or anything else, or if you have ideas, you know, if you saw the series and you have something that you wanted to say about the game, or have a recommendation about other games, or movies, or books, or whatever, by all means, please leave a comment. Everything's welcome. I'd love to have a discussion with you guys in the comments below. Uh, and in any case, I'll see you all next time. Brotherhood, 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 brotherhood.